Hi, my name is Daniel Wanjama. I run an organization called Seed Savers Network. Seed Savers Network conserves seeds in the seed banks. Come with me, I show you a seed bank. When you are entering seed banks, seed bank is a place where we conserve seeds at risk of getting extinct. There are many seeds that are already extinct and before you get inside, we normally have a moment of silence to remember all the seeds that we have lost. Now we can enter. My journey in seed saving started uh, many years back, more than 10 years, uh, because as a professional trained in agriculture, I had discussed this with many people and I had uh, been in the field for a number of years and I could see how farmers were struggling with not having seeds that they want. I could see how farmers were like not able to afford the seeds that they want and uh, because of the cost of the seeds and I could uh, visit uh, some agro shops and, and look for some seeds myself and I don't find them and the only way that uh, I realized that this could be managed that is lack of seeds uh, high cost of seeds and uh, and, and the whole idea of farmers living in places uh, very much interior where there are no shops to buy seeds and how that impacts food security in terms of if you don't have your own seeds then you are not able to grow food and if you are not able to grow food then you are hungry or you grow the wrong thing and I saw most of the seeds that we are having here is only what we are able to import from other countries I realize there is a problem here and need to be addressed and need to be solved and the only way to solve it is to have farmers save their own seeds themselves so that they are able to control their production and they are able to have food and they are also need, able to have nutrition that they need from diversity and the conventional seed system was not able to do that. The idea of seed saving is about adapting various varieties to the environment and the whole idea is that if you get seeds from a farmer you go and save seeds yourself you're not supposed to uh, to go by again. So initially, with the seeds that you introduce to your environment I might not agree, but after saving several seasons, then they will start improving and start adapting to your environment. So eventually, you have it get used to your environment and it start working well for you. There is a lot of loss of uh, local varieties that is happening, and uh, we, we normally blame that to people forgetting local varieties and going for the commercial varieties and uh, they normally do it because there is a lot of advertisement of the uh, new varieties by companies that want to sell them and uh, globally FAO has done a study and it shows that we have lost 75 percent of what we used to eat as uh, human beings globally in the world the whole world and in Kenya, we did a study here in Akuru County and we discovered that uh, for, from just 10 villages in Akuru County, we have lost 35 varieties of different crops, some of them beans, some of them maize, some of them uh, even uh, local vegetables that have disappeared. They cannot be traced anymore and uh, farmers who have been doing farming for many years they have fresh memory of that the of what they used to see but they don't see it anymore but if you challenge them why did you then uh, stop producing it? it they say it's because we were brought new varieties some new varieties came and we planted we never thought we are going to lose what we had but after planting for a couple of seasons what came then and we don't plant what we used to have anymore then our varieties we can't trace them anymore they were not losing it consciously 
but then they still get lost. The commercial seed sector normally have acquire plant breeders rights for their varieties like some sort of patent they don't want to call it patent but it it, it, it have the same kind of uh, implication so the commercial seed sector protect their seeds legally so that they cannot be saved and reused by the farmers so they can be able to prosecute you if you use their seeds and if you save their seeds Therefore, we normally avoid commercial varieties. And for the commercial varieties, if uh, the, the, the CAFIS normally publish a list of uh, a list of released varieties in the national varieties list, and uh, there's a long list of what is uh, supposed to be commercial and owned by different entities, different companies, and uh, those ones we don't focus on them. What we focus on are traditional varieties that we used to have over many, many years. Seed saving is a traditional practice by the ancient farmers. All the breeding, all the seeds that we see around, are the, and even the modern varieties, hybrid, whatever, they are, they are their source. Or they started as seed saving by the farmers. And this seed saving is nothing but the art of farmers isolating the best varieties, isolating the best uh, crops and uh, isolating the best plants and using them as source of the food in the next season. And with the farmers, it was very common if, uh, even in, in 70s in Kenya, like farmers did not buy seeds for maize or anything. All of them used to save seeds. It only stopped somehow but not entirely, it stopped for some crops like maize uh, when seed companies started coming up with different varieties and uh, using the media to market them and uh, telling, telling them, telling farmers that these are the only uh, solution to, 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 to um, high yields and because everybody wanted to high yields then everybody started going that direction that did not solve the problem of the yields sometimes you still get very little yields even after buying seeds a lot of people and a lot of farmers who, who use the seeds uh, that they have used before and uh, bring them back to the farm again a lot of time the main reason is always that the seeds that you can keep for a long time and save several uh, years become they, they adapt to your environment and therefore uh, if they adapt to the environment they don't need a lot of care for them to survive because they adapted it's, it's just in every living thing has the environment where they are supposed to be seeds and plants are the same they require the same it's just like that special uh, thing that nature put into a living organism so that they are able to survive in certain environments. Even people, even human beings, if they are raised, like for instance, they are raised in Akuru and then they go to live in Kisumu, a lot of time they'll be suffering from malaria. While the people who are born there, they are not suffering from malaria. It's the same thing. And this adaptation of to the environment happens to the food as well happen to the crops and if that happens then you if you are raising your own seeds you you rely less on use of fertilizer uh, if even moisture levels of uh, the crop get used to your moisture level get used to your soil get used even to your percentages so they know how to deal with it so either way they know how to survive and again if you do seed saving you save a lot of money the money that you would have used to buy seeds because seeds are not cheap you have seen some seeds are uh, like for one greenhouse of tomato hybrid you can spend uh, 8,000 shillings so if you save that money then uh, it is useful for you as a small-scale farmer so far we have worked with over 2,500 uh, groups of farmers and uh, they have about 25 members per, per group of uh, this network who are saving their own seeds and there are many more who are not part of us but they are saving seeds and they are reusing the seeds so and uh, the whole idea of seed saving is popular to everyone who grow food 
because they are able to to conserve and uh, they are able to do it at less cost. The whole idea of uh, seed saving and uh, seed network is not about having one particular institution or having one particular uh, farmer having so much seeds. It's about having thousands and millions of farmers having small amount of seeds individually and being able to share what they have with one another. So because of the multitude and the numbers of people who are doing it, 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 it doesn't have any challenge with scale. It's possible to have as, as much seeds as possible. It's, for instance, if you're talking about uh, potato seeds, potato seeds in Kenya, as we speak, only two or three percent of the seeds can normally come, according to research, normally come from commercial arena. All these other seeds come from seeds that are saved by the farmers and farmers are able to transfer seed from one person to another and uh, so long as they have knowledge on how to control pests and diseases that could be transmitted through seeds they are able to surprise seeds to anybody who needs it because they don't farmers don't specialize on seed uh, as, a, as, as a commodity they specialize on food but part of the production is used as seed and that way you're able to satisfy almost everyone who needs seeds. Moving forward, I, I, I believe agroecology and uh, food safety and uh, losing of local food, eating people's eating their own food, this is something that is becoming popular and it is going to change a lot in a, in a way that a lot of people now will be looking for local food because of health issues and it's also uh, being aggravated by many, many situations that are even limiting the global interaction where people can rely on others to, to get food. And people are trying to be more independent in terms of food. So moving forward, uh, this, is, this is something that policymakers, uh, people in government, uh, development partners are recognizing that it is important for people to grow their own food and for people to eat safe food and for people to be healthy and people to have diverse food. So the movement is growing and it's getting support from uh, different quarters and uh, being part of global agenda uh, is, is, is even making it more relevant. I have seen FAO, they have also, uh, they are also advocating for agroecology and therefore we are working together and uh, I'm, ho I'm hoping that Moving forward, we are going to have more action, even uh, support from many quarters, even the government as well. That's my story as a seed saver. And I'm curious to learn how you save your own seeds and what you do in agroecology. Share your story.